Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. This week I have Peter Adams, who is a physicist and he's also the Vice President of Business Development at a company called V-Light. Um, previously on the show we had Dr. Lou Lim, who was the CEO uh, and the um, scientific mind behind this company, and this is uh, all about photobiomodulation today. Very big word. Very fancy word. Um, biohackers out there all might know about photobiomodulation, very uh, promising area of science. Uh, and we're going to be talking to Peter today all about the, the science. It's basically the science of light and how um, certain wavelengths can affect the body uh, with different light frequencies and wavelengths. Uh, and what that's all about. So uh, we we head over to the show shortly. Just a reminder, if you'd love to check out our Patreon program, we need support for this podcast to keep it on air. We've been going now for seven years. It's been free that entire time, but there is a huge team behind this and it costs us an awful lot of money to bring you this free content. So anybody who would like to support the show with a very small donation, it's a couple of you know cups of coffee um, and to get some exclusive member benefits while you're at it, please head over to uh, patron p-a-t-r-o-n dot lisatamati dot com and uh, you can become a friend of the show that would be really appreciated also check out our programs what we do our health optimization programs my health consulting uh, I do take on a small number of one-on-one -on -one clients and help people with uh, difficult health journeys or optimizing their health and performance uh, we have our run coaching at running hot coaching we have our epigenetics and DNA testing programs um, and and we also have our anti-aging and health supplement range. range uh, NMNbio.nz is the website for that one, as well as over at lisatamati.com. There is another range over there. So lots of uh, complicated pieces in our business, but it's evolved over time. And we're very much in the anti-aging and longevity space and health optimization, as well as the sporting performance space. So check out everything we do at lisatamati.com. Right, over to the show with Peter Adams. Well, hi everyone and welcome back to Pushing the Limits. This week I have Peter Adams with me who is the Vice President of uh, Business Development at VLight and VLight is a photobiomodulation company and we have had uh, Dr. Lou uh, Lim on the show previously and it was one of my most popular episodes. So I wanted to get uh, an update on how things are going over at VLight and to talk more about photobiomodulation. So welcome to the show, Peter. It's fantastic to have you. Thanks, Lisa. It's a pleasure. Pleasure to be here. <laughs> now, Peter, photobiomodulation, that's a heck of a big word. Let's start <laughs> there. Um, it's also got many other names. Um, can you give us a little bit of background on what actually is photobiomodulation? Okay, so, well, it describes the process where light or photons actually, and their impact physically on the body. Um, obviously, there have been discoveries where it's affecting people mentally and cognitively, but uh, photobiomodulation really is, is the interaction of light on the body and what actually happens, what gets mm -hmm. modulated. Okay, so now we're talking certain spectrums of light because, you know, we all, we all understand that what the light has different wavelengths. Mm -hmm. And um, for, the, for the therapeutic uses, it's mostly, from what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, in the sort of uh, 600 to 1,000 or 1,100 nano, nanometers, uh, that, those sort of wavelengths. Is that right? Yeah, those are, are the favorite parts of the spectrum for a lot of healing. Um, specifically, you know, let's, let's sort of look at what happens when you go to longer and shorter wavelengths. It's been found that blue and ultraviolet, we know that ultraviolet is a great disinfectant. Mm -hmm. However, you, it doesn't, because it's shorter, it can't penetrate, it can't yep. penetrate so deeply. And then on, on the other hand, on the red end, you've got infrared and you can only have so much infrared power next to the body without it burning, physically heating the cells and burning. So there's this there's this sweet spot with the red and near infrared where you want to get that that nice combination of penetration, but with with actual cellular effect, enough power for cellular effect. And that part of the spectrum seems to work really well. Right. And now how the heck 
do you get delivery of light to cells in order to, you know, like um, I know because I know about VLAN and what they do, but just for people listening and go, okay, light, yeah. uh, how do we get light inside the body? Right. Well, for, from what we're doing, there are two specific areas. One is in the nose, intranasally. And the reason for that is in, in the, at the surface in the sinuses is where there's a, a profusion of blood cells very mm -hmm. close to the surface. So, so you're in really good shape to uh, penetrate the blood. So that, that's really the first place. Uh, actually, it's the, the blood is the first place where really work was done on light therapy. Um, over 50 years ago, the Russians and the Chinese were researching bioinfusing the blood using actual fiber optics directly into the veins. Oh, wow. And uh, so Dr. Lu Lim decided to try and invent a, a an intranasal non-invasive version that was, and uh, that's that's where the first intranasal came from, was from that discovery. Now. Um, later on, there's been all sorts of, as photobiomodulation has, has evolved, there's been a lot of research on effects of, you know, frequency, different, different wave bands and um, pulse frequency as well. Mm -hmm. So not just uh, light wavelength of light, but pulse, pulse frequency. And some of those have evolved and, and some discoveries found that, you know, there were effects on animals by bioinfusing the brain. So um, at V-Light, Lou decided to figure out what's the best way to work with the brain. And he decided to work with the default mode network. So, mm -hmm. And what we wanted, and our goal has always been to develop devices which are the lowest power, so they can be rechargeable, they can be used at home, they can be safe, um, and they're very easy to use. You just switch them on and they switch off after 20 minutes. So that's those were the sort of goals of the design. But uh, we found that after this early discovery um, of effects on, on, for example, beta amyloid plaques mm -hmm. in, in mice, rats, etc., and, and 40 hertz pulsing using near infrared, um, Lou decided to try and do a, a near, you know, a, uh, a non-invasive version, which is our transcranial um, uh, device. Now, in terms of what's going on physically, it's known that <clears throat> near infrared does penetrate the brain uh, or uh, probably about four centimeters mm -hmm. if you have uh, 100 milliwatt, these 100 milliwatt diodes that, that are there. Um, so the question is, does it go to the rest of the brain and how does it get there? Yeah, now, that's where that's where there's a bit of a mystery. But what we what we decided to do was to say, OK, how can we show if if those four or well, actually it's five, it's five diodes, but if those uh, diodes are they powerful enough to affect the whole brain? Mm -hmm. And we we had a we have a great partner at um, a place called CAMH, the Canadian Addictions and Mental Health uh, Association in Toronto. It's one of the leading mental health areas, and Dr. Uh, Reza Zomorodi who's a, one of the leading EEG experts, helped us by doing a study where he would use what's called QEG, where you have 36 electrodes, almost three-dimensionally around the mm -hmm. brain. And then you can use software uh, to actually extract the brainwave frequency bands. You, you probably heard of those frequency yes. bands, yep, alpha, beta, it. gamma, delta. Yeah. And um, you can also you you also see with these maps uh, whether there, there's actual extra amplitude or power in those wave bands or or less power. And uh, he did that study and he showed that the whole brain is affected from those four those four diodes and wow. the intranasal. So was now, this the first time that you were able to see pictures of of changes in the blood in the brain wave function? So to speak, it was it was to it was the first time we were able to see it affecting the whole brain in some way. Wow. Um, there were, I mean, there have been, um, you know, cellular photographs of neuronal repair using near infrared that was done at UCSF, mm. and you can see neural networks repairing. Um, but that that was uh, that was a few years back. But this is more more uh, a recent study which we did. I think uh, Reza did it 
I don't know, it must be three years ago now. It's hard to remember with COVID. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I do remember we, he was physically in the building. So so it's probably about three or four years ago. And that was published. Actually, it was published in The Lancet. Oh, brilliant. So yeah. it, it, it does appear to be um, affecting all parts of the brain then, even though like this device, you've got the alpha neuro, I believe, and the alpha gamma. Is that right? And do, do these devices have different, uh, affect different wavelengths differently? So the the uh, so it's the neuro alpha which pulses at ten hertz, mm -hmm. and which um, you know was designed so that it would help the brain to resonate in the alpha wave band of the, uh -huh. of, of the brain, and then the the neuro gamma which pulses at forty hertz, that one was designed uh, mainly out of an experience of this this kind of reduction in beta amyloid plaques, which is known to be associated not necessarily a hundred percent but with alzheimer's yes yes absolutely or, and uh so yeah those those two um do have different effects now uh, they have not been rigorously scientifically qu quantified what the different effects are between those two all i can tell you is from you know experience uh with users a lot of users find the alpha more calming mm -hmm. um, makes sense. and the the other users find the gamma brilliant for executive function and focus in fact we have we have a lot of um you know sports professionals psychological trainers in sports use them for getting ready for the game getting ready in the zone and things like that um so so that's going on so in term in terms of real rigorous study no I can tell you my own experience when I was rear-ended a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you have concussion, there's this sort of early phase of feeling exhausted, but revved up inside. So you have this horrible conflict. It's glutamate. Yeah. The al yeah, the, the, exactly. The alpha frequency device calmed that down right away. Mm. But then when I got back to work and started looking at this, you know, at, contracts and numbers and trying to make decisions with a foggy head the gamma really <laughs> helped with that okay so that's, yeah so with the executive yeah. function side of things so does it has because i know there's been over three thousand studies in photobiomodulation and it has quite a long history now and it has been shown yeah. as, uh, in you know to help with alzheimer's and many many other neurodegenerative diseases and, and so on and so forth and brain injuries uh depression i think schizophrenia and correct me wherever <clears throat> if i'm wrong right um but and there's ongoing and we need more and you know the usual sort of um things or science at the, the bottom of every clinical study i think further study <laughs> is required <laughs> it's always the standard uh, <laughs> the standard thing yes. <laughs> no is the easiest answer. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. But there is a, a, a plethora of work, and this has been very, uh, you know, extensively studied. Um, so where was I going with this? So the, the can you, is is it inhibiting then the glutamate? Because the, the, when you have, a, for example, a traumatic brain injury or a concussion like you had, there is an, uh, an increase in the amount of glutamate that comes out. The neurons start firing constantly. And it is yeah. one of the major problems why neurons die in that, you know, um, post-concussion or traumatic brain injury. Uh, I, I know this um, with my, you know, work with mum and, and subsequent mm -hmm. clients that I work with, that glutamate is one of the targets that we want to be able to calm down. Has it been shown to actually calm the glutamate response down? Do you know, or is that no, still ongoing? I don't, I, a, I don't know. I've never heard, and I think I would have if if I have heard. Um, I, I can tell you what we do know, and uh, we've just we just completed a study with uh, 40 retired ex-athletes at the University mm -hmm. of Utah uh, who have all had repetitive head injuries. Mm. And um, I think it's, it's some of the things that happen is, you know, you get shearing between the lobes, so the communication breaks, so you need Corpus repair. Yep. Uh, but with the, in that study, we did pre and post, or they did pre and post fMRIs, um, and pervasively, they showed an increase of blood flow in the grain. So the, that's, I think, um, 
you know, increased blood flow to anywhere is always always a good thing it, to start it, with. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and and going back to your earlier question about mechanism, uh, one of the one of the key mechanisms of photobiomodulation, especially directly into the blood through the nose, is a change in the viscosity, increasing the microcirculation, and uh, also an increase in nitric oxide, which is a, another great healer ah, uh, as well. Yeah. Um, and and uh, of course, then there's the reduced oxygen species effect. So inflammation uh, gets affected too. So there's a whole bunch of uh, effects that seem to be happening in parallel, which just induce healing. And and uh, the other the other thing you know you're also associated with concussion is ATP levels, mm -hmm. and uh, we all know that ATP is a, a good indicator of immune function. Um, we know that another mechanism of photobiomodulation increases ATP. Well, so this is actually, yeah, let's go into a little bit of the mechanism of action here. So when we have the device, for example, the intranasal device, which I've got and I've got sitting over there and I was meant yeah. to bring it over, <laughs> I forgot. Um, and I sit there every day with it up my nose. <laughs> um, this is delivering these light, these photons to the chromophores and impacting a number of different pathways uh, from what I understand, in, in particular, the cytochrome C oxidase. C oxidase, yeah. Um, yeah. And this is sort of increasing the, 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 the ability to get oxygen to the ATP synthase. Is that, is that what's happening? Um, and, uh, and I so, believe so, yeah. Yeah, and increasing the, um, the, uh, the ability to make more ATP, which, of course, is your, right. your energy production in the cell. So you're going to get more... Yeah. Um, and from the research I've done, also the increase in the uh, mitochondria. Um, so it yes, can actually, the mitochondrial function. That's right, that, which which powers strength and cell building. <laughs> so everything. So, I mean, everything yes, comes down to yes. mitochondria at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those little powerhouses in our cells that actually that's make right. the energy. So we're going to see an increase in energy. I did, I think, believe I, I read somewhere that it actually can increase the number of mitochondria in the cell um so that part i haven't heard that's yeah or maybe i've got that wrong don't quote me no, you could no no there's so i mean <laughs> like, so like you say you can't know everything about photobiomodulation I, it's just yeah it's huge. something new it's every huge. day yeah it's a huge field isn't it and, and and yet it's 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 mostly unknown to to the average person on the street i think that's still right. doesn't really understand and it sound when i first heard about photobiomodulation i'm like how the hell can shining a light up your nose improve your, your health? And I was just like, hmm. And then when I dived into the science a little bit, I was yeah. like, get me one of these, you know? And I was very lucky That's enough right. that uh, V-Light sent me uh, two of the devices and I, and I use them in my mum's rehabilitation. And, you know, my listeners know that story very well. Um, and that was a key part of her rehabilitation along with hyperbaric and, and many other things. Um, and we will never know 100% which of the things worked, but in combination, no, she wonderful. had a, a miraculous recovery. So um, I'm, you know, quite passionate about this sort of stuff, obviously. Uh, and we had a 630 uh, wavelength and a, the 810 intranasal. We didn't have the, right. the, the um, transcranial, but I'm interested in, in, in getting one of those for sure. Um, and this... With her brain, she had massive brain damage, age 74, told never, never do anything again. You can't repair Incredible. the neurons and you, and so on and so forth. And she's came back from that beautifully. It took me two and a half years of huge and huge amounts of work. Uh, we've since had cancer. So she was uh, regressed oh, again she, because she had mm. brain tumors. Um, and then we've come forward again. So um the brain is an incredibly resilient um, thing, given the right environment. And right. obviously, we've managed to give her the right environment, you know, with with the right diet and the right supplements and the right, sure. uh, as as well as uh, these devices like V-Lights devices and hyperbaric and so on, to, for her to recover again, you know. Um, so it's amazing 
uh, and it and it um, makes me hopeful for people with uh, Alzheimer's. You know, and there is a lot of re- research around photobiomodulation in Alzheimer's. So let's maybe you know look at that a little bit. Um, you mentioned the nitric oxide pathway. You mentioned tau proteins. What does anybody know what the mechanism of action and why this could be helping with people with with Alzheimer's and and neurodegeneration in general? I don't. I don't think the, the truthful answer is the, the scientific answer is no. Um, we are, you know, we, we started a clinical trial with St. Michael's Hospital in, Ox, in, uh, in Oxford, in Toronto, mm-hmm. uh, four years ago now, and it got, it got stuck with uh, COVID because oh, we yeah. couldn't, uh, couldn't continue the trial. Uh, but in, in the original case study we did with a few patients, uh, we saw anything from dramatic effects to no effects. Now, um, that's that's why uh, I always caution people to think that photobiomodulation is the answer to Alzheimer's. Uh, I think even if you if you look at, um, for example, antipsychotic drugs, um, anticonvulsant drugs, all of them. You're not going to say that one is going to fix everything, and the chances of one fixing anything is is less than thirty percent. So it's, it's a the hit rate. And the other thing is, it is my belief that underlying conditions that cause plaque in the brain could mm. could come from a myriad of sources. Mm, and I think it absolutely. depends on on your own individual. Um, uh, profile or you know physiological profile and chemical pathogenic profile um, for example if you have a lot of heavy, heavy metal in your brain for example I don't think light's going to change that heavy metal yeah <laughs> it might uh, help the blood flow may help to to release it so um, it's a kind of a long-winded way of I just just like to um, add caution and because we're at V light we've really taken attack of being very um, rigorous in terms of evidence base. We obviously have a lot of people using our devices around the world. We hear miracles and sometimes we hear not much, but we don't, in gen- in general, we get very few devices returned. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I, think, I think there's hope for Alzheimer's. Uh, I just saw another study with autism come out of Italy using mm-hmm. our, our neuro as well which looks really promising, but it was also coupled with other therapies. Mm. And, um, and the so like you said, there's work to be done. Yeah, there's yeah, multifaceted there's work, approach. Work to be to, done. Um, yeah. Yep. And you've been doing it for, this is the, the, it's been going for what now 30, 40 years, the photobiomodulation yeah. from what I understand. And um, yeah. there's some, you know, the, 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 there is a, what what interests me is that there's a lot of mechanisms of action that are very plausible um, yeah, uh, yeah. that that we can say, yeah, that would make sense. Uh, and that the safety profile of, is pretty, is very good. Um, and so right. those are, you know, low risk intervention, possible reward always sort of comes onto my radar as being something worth having a, having a look at if you're dealing mm-hmm. with something that has otherwise not great outcomes. Um, Correct. Correct. And, you know, that's, that's an, a, a, always an important thing. Um, do you know much about the nitric oxide pathways um, and, and how, so nitric oxide, re, re, uh, it, re, how do you say it, relaxes the blood vessels to make more blood flow? Is that what's sort of happening in the nitric that's, oxide? That's about the level of my knowledge. I'm a physicist and uh, was a bioengineer, but not. I'm not a, a, a physiologist or a neuroscientist. Unfortunately, yeah. I can't really answer that. That's my understanding. You're correct. Yeah, yeah. So that uh, uh, nitric oxide, something I've looked into quite a lot um, with different mechanisms and different genes that, that are in play with nitric oxide, and it's in a very important uh, uh, molecule that the body produces to relax the blood vessels and increase right. the blood flow and do lots of th- things like this. And from what the lectures that I've listened to, nit- the nitric oxide pathway is one of the pathways that it is. Um, influencing shall we say yeah um yeah. so okay well, let's look at a couple of the uh wavelengths now you've got the sort of 600 wavelength is that now that's the 
It's a 633. 633, yep. Yeah, so that's that's essentially a red light emitting diode. It's a regular LED. Mm -hmm. So you can and actually the, see this this uh, these wavelengths. You can see you can actually see it. Uh, actually, I should have had one at hand, but uh, yeah, I've got you, one over don't. there. <laughs> uh, and then um, when you go up to the six fifty five nanometer, um, that device is a laser diode, so it has slightly more power and, and penetration. Again, it's red. You don't want to look at it in your eye for too long. Uh, but it does actually penetrate quite deeper. It, it actually is able to penetrate through the soft palate into into the deep brain. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And um, then then when you move up to the eight ten, that's where you're in the near infrared band. And when you when you actually look at a near infrared diode, you can see a red glow, but no no, you know, light emitting diode gives off that one frequency there's also there's like a little bell curve there's other frequencies near it uh -huh. so that's why you can you can see a bit of red uh when when the, when it's pulsing ah, but the, okay but the bulk of the frequency is at eight ten nanometers in near infrared and these in these two devices are they actually pulsing light or are they a, a consistent delivery of light uh yeah so the the first two, the reds that we have, are not pulsing. They're just a, okay. a consistent delivery. And, uh, you know, they are designed to bioinfuse the blood, basically. But I think the, the deep brain part, the near-infrared diodes will go further into, into the deep brain. Um, it, it is kind of good to, to mention. One of the things we were talking about mitochondria just now, yes. I forgot to mention something. Mm. And that is um, only a few years ago, cell-free mitochondria were discovered in the blood. Oh. We didn't think there were mitochondria in the blood. So this is a whole new area too uh, of trying to figure out how does light affect the blood. <laughs> wow. Okay. I didn't, yeah, yeah. I, I so didn't that's, know that. that's pretty new. Anyway, no. sorry to divert. We'll go no, back no, to, no. to your your original um, discovery. So yeah, the eight ten nanometer devices we have in we are, they're either pulsed at eight, eight, at a ten hertz or forty hertz. So mm -hmm. that's the gamma. The intranatal only one called the eight ten that pulses at, at ten hertz. Mm -hmm. But what we're going to do now is we're going to come out. We're coming out with a, a new device. Uh, which will allow you to switch the pulsing frequency or have it continuous in that one little intranasal. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a nice affordable device because not everybody, you know, can afford a couple of thousand dollars for the yes. for the headset. But yeah. uh, it's we've had some pretty profound effects from that little little device. It's, yeah, well, we certainly have. As, you as know. of you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, and I, and I use it um, most days yeah. still. Yeah. And this is now what six, seven years later. <laughs> Maybe that's why my brain is so fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it definitely helps your brain. I I can attest to that myself. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> and then uh, uh, I, when you pass fifty, you sort of need some help, don't you? <laughs> I think so. I think so. <laughs> yeah. But look, go, going up the frequencies, we we now have another new device called the Neuro Pro. I don't know if you and I have ever discussed that with us, no. with Lou. Okay, so the Neuro Pro is is really um, a discovery. I call it a discovery device. Uh, a lot of biohackers are interested in it, but that that now gives you six diodes across the top, mm. uh, one to go on the on the back, like our X Plus, and and an intranasal. And it's all uh, each diode is controlled from a, an app where you can change the power, the pulse frequency and, and uh, the, the phase on, on the way the, the, the light's pulsing. Um, and now that, that, like you said, what, what are the frequencies? Well, that, that device can go from zero hertz or DC or no pulsing all the way up to 10 kilohertz. And uh, we've, got, we've got some uh, serious meditation researchers who are looking at that right now, wow. looking at different frequencies with some quite profound effects stay tuned and that that sounds absolutely fascinating because yeah. you know i think a lot of us are, 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 would love to calm the brain down you know like <laughs> with yeah. our the yeah. lifestyle that most of us lead with a thousand things coming at us all the time and we're over 
I know I am over hyped up and over stressed right. up, uh, and trying to get those brain waves down into that, the, those calming brain waves would be uh, a really important thing. So being able to manipulate the, the the device, so to speak, to be able to get this or yeah. that, depending on what you're trying to achieve at that time of the day, whether you're trying to gear up for some cognitive work or whether you're trying to power down in the evening to get ready for bed. Um, because this, I mean, this whole meditation space, you know, I, I years ago when I was very much, oh, I wanted only the science. I didn't want any of the, the woo-woo stuff. And, and I used to poo-hoo um, the meditation <laughs> side of it. Not so much anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I lost that arrogant attitude uh, right. because the science is really uh, conclusive and you can really feel the benefits. And you, when you do meditation, and I'm by no means uh, super good at it and I need to do more of it, <laughs> um, I think we probably all do. But uh, it's, it, it is just so powerful for helping you control the, you know, your, your emotional state, your ability to function, your ability right. to recover, um, your immune system, all of these things which are impacted by the, the, an overexcited brain, which I think a lot of us have now, you know, overexcited brains from brain injuries, from um, toxins in the environment, from the wrong foods and inflammation and all of the things right. that sort of happen, um, trying to calm them down and to get it, get it in the right zone at the right time. Um, is, is definitely very, very important. It's important to me as we as we age, trying to keep that cognitive ability. And I think you know this is why it's exciting too in the prevention space, perhaps. You know, where we, you know, if we don't want to develop neurodegeneration in our later life, what are the things that we can be looking at now or studying now to find out how do we optimize our brain function and keep our brain function because it's correct. A, it's a bloody awful thing, you know, neurodegeneration. <laughs> it's just terrible. Um, and, you know, we repeated brain injuries, athletes, you know, rugby players and, and um, you know, all those contact sports. We've, we've had repeated brain injuries. These are the areas, you know, where I think it's going to be so beneficial um, you know, and, and on that point, you know, that the hyperbaric oxygen therapy, which is what you see there in the background. Yeah. Um, Hypnosis, yeah. 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 That's very, very, very powerful as well for, and again, it's increasing the, uh, or decreasing the inflammation, improving your stem cell production, uh, hyper oxygenating the, the, the body. Um, so it's doing some, you know, similar, but different things, you know, um, and, yeah. and then combining all these 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 bits and pieces as you can tell i'm a biohacker <laughs> extraordinary <laughs> i love biohacking i love being able to tweak and play with our biology and try to improve it and enhance it and um doing it in such a way that's perhaps hopefully not um not dangerous but um yeah it's a very very interesting area uh it's, all this area. it's what's interesting is the and there, there's no direct research that gamma pulsing induces gamma brainwave states uh, but the gamma brainwave state of sleep when you enter that state that's the key detox part of 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 the brain at night and uh so there there is definitely something there to be uh to be sought i think yeah, absolutely if you, can, if you can do it in meditation during the daytime i think that's that's even better or yeah, and I think, you know, like we, there's definitely a connection between, um, you know, not having enough sleep and then leading that leads on to, to, oh, sure. towards uh, neurodegeneration. Um, and, and this can happen qu even quite quickly. Um, so, so anything that's going to enhance what happens in that sort of that's, that phase of sleep um, is a very interesting area of science, shall we say. Um, so it's really, really fascinating. Um, Peter, so you've got, just, just list me off your different devices right through your range and, uh, you know, what areas each one is doing, and then we'll probably wrap it up and, you know, um, let Great. you get back to your right. wife because you've got a poor sick wife at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think she's she's snoozing right now, so all's good. good. Thank you. Thanks for for that. So, like that, winding back to the smallest and the first device. That's the actually the six fifty five was the first device that we had. So that mm -hmm. that is a 
you know, double A battery powered pocket intranasal device, which has a laser diode, uh, which has a 655 nanometer wavelength. More recently than that, we used an LED, which uses less power, so 633. So it looks exactly the same, same this intranasal. This one I've got, yep, one of them. Yeah. Then moving up for that, you go to the 810, mm. but, I, but that the, that's well. going to be replaced by the MIP which looks the same, looks just the same as those two devices. It's just pulsing and it uses near infrared. So we're going to also allow you to do, uh, you know, two pulse frequencies with that, that wow. little device. That's okay, the next thing that's coming out. Uh, yeah, that'll be coming out in a few months from now. Um, uh, again, on the sort of cost scale, there's another device called the X Plus. So the X Plus has intranasal. And then it has one um, uh, applicator, which just has one 100 milliwatt diode in it, near infrared. And uh, that's that device, you can use it, you can add it to the neuro and it will reach over to the back of the head or, mm -hmm. or for very specific reasons. Or you can put it anywhere on the body. Oh. Now, mo most recently, we've just uh, completed a clinical trial, which will is just being submitted to Health Canada with 280 uh, COVID plus positive um, uh, participants. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, we've been using that to stimulate the immune system over the thymus mm -hmm. and uh, using the near infrared. And the results of that are just about to be published. They're really very interesting results. Oh, wow. Coming is out. it yeah. over the thymus? So are you putting it down on the chest, the diode, or is it still? That's right, wow. yeah, right here. It yeah. just grabs around the body, or you can use it with a strap, and then there's the intranasal as well. Mm. Wow, that's going yeah. to be fascinating. It'll be interesting to see what, what the results come out of that. I suppose you're not allowed to let anything out of the sink. Uh, I, can tell you, I can tell you one thing. In the control group, um, four people were hospitalized. <clears throat> uh, in the, in the uh, treatment group, none were hospitalized. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, Good. so that's all I can say at this point because there's – it's quite a, a battery of tests that were done in terms of recovery speed and so forth. But uh, uh, as soon as I have it, we'll we'll ship it over to you. Okay, that sounds <laughs> excellent. Tell, tell you tell your guests. Anyway, moving up from the X Plus. Uh, by the way, a lot of people use the X Plus also on the stomach. Um, there's there is there has been and is research into uh, effects on the microbiome. Oh. There's studies going, uh, that have come out of Australia um, looking at. It, positive impacts on a broader spectrum in the microbiome from mm -hmm. uh, near infrared diodes over the stomach. Wow. And uh, yeah, so, some researchers are also doing that in, in combination uh, with either nose or, or head diodes, transcranial diodes to look at autism. I'm not sure mm. in the Italian study, I haven't read it yet, literally came out a few, we came to us a few days ago. Um, but uh, yeah, that that device is kind of interesting. You mm -hmm. put it anywhere on the body. You can use it for, you know, just either wound repair or just injuries to bones, muscles, etc. That's what healing. that's de designed for. Yeah. And then uh, moving up again, like we talked about the two neuros. Everybody knows the neuro. You see mm. them in all all the studies. So uh, you know, currently those have four diodes. Three three are here and one at the front covering the what's called the default mode network of the brain. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and then moving up from that, like I mentioned, we've got the Neuro Pro, which, which uh, essentially has six, seven, and an intranasal diode, which are all controllable by, from an app. Wow. That's yeah. the, the top of the line one, yeah. so to speak. And that's commercially available now already. Yes, it one. is. Yeah, you yep. can see that. Yeah, you can see that at vlight.com. Sure. Okay, at vlight.com. Peter, you've been really uh, fascinating today. I'd like to thank you very much for your time. Um, it, it's oh. been, it's one of these areas that's just fascinating and is growing and the research is, is starting to trickle out, which is, which yeah. is great. I, I, when I spoke to Dr. Lou Lim, who is, you know, one of the world's leading experts on this um, a couple of years ago, that, that podcast has done the rounds and rounds and rounds it's really been <laughs> a popular um podcast and uh I, I know a lot of people went and got 
uh, devices after listening to Dr. Dr. Lim. Um, just absolutely fantastic. Uh, I, I'm excited for the for the future of this, and um, I always just like oh, to bring the, the cutting edge stuff out. And I bet it's exciting working at a company like that. That's um, you know on the on the forefront of this burgeoning new area of science, so to speak. Oh, thanks very much, Lisa. And look, we we have the utmost respect for people like you because it's people like you that are really trailblazing. And uh, like you said, clinical trials take a long time. <laughs> and research always, there's always another question to research. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's really uh, patient reported outcomes that give us great, great spirit. But uh, now we're moving to that for some, with some really good, uh, well-documented research outcomes and then clinical trials. So we've got, it's all it's all coming together, but thank you. Thank you for doing this. No, it's brilliant. I just like to share the latest and, and get that information out there because if things just stay in the in the uh, clinical study realm, then the general public doesn't you know necessarily get to no. hear about it when they need it. Um, and it's uh, it is available now, so you, people can can check it all out. Uh, vlight.com, v i e l i g h t dot com is the place to go. Um, and yeah, reach out to the team there. I'm sure they'll help you if you've got any questions further and we will have some links down below um, in the show notes everybody um, so make sure you check that out Peter thank you so much for your time today it's been absolutely marvellous thanks Lisa it's been lovely say hi to New Zealand <laughs> we will do